Hello and welcome to this Dungeon Fog tutorial. I'm going to be talking about the Brushes tool. Now, the Brushes tool is this uh, paintbrush here called the Draw Brush tool. When I select it, we're presented with a few options. Our brush texture, thickness, softness and opacity. I'm going to select the brush texture first to uh, show you that it opens up all of the textures that we normally have access to, as well as all of the color controls, color wheels that we expect, our scaling options and so on. I'm going to add some dirt to this dungeon. So I'm going to go instead with grass. I think let's uh, scroll up and go with ground, dirt. I like to use dark soil as a matter of fact. I find that gives it quite a nice dusty kind of look. And uh, when I move my cursor of my map now, once I deselect the texture, you will notice that I have this outer strong orange circle and a slightly weaker circle in the middle. What that is indicating is my thickness and my softness. The thickness of the brush tool determines how big it is, whereas the softness determines what the fall off of that brush is. So let me demonstrate. If I change my thickness to 50% and I increase my softness as far as it can go, that outer circle is now as far away from the inner circle as it can be. So if I left click and drag, you'll notice that I'm creating a very soft tone, a very different tone on the stonework within the actual map itself. That's because my opacity is low. Let me uh, increase my opacity to 100% and let me redo that. So I'm going to do another stripe of this texture. We can now very clearly see the mud texture. We can see that it's got a lot of fall off on either edge. So it's blending nicely into our actual existing textures. Now, if I start to change these values around, if I change the softness, let me make it smaller. The outer circle is closer to our central circle, the thickness of the brush. So if I were to now to do another stripe, I'm actually going to take that uh, softness all the way down. If I do another stripe, you're going to notice it has a much harder edge. Its fall off is not as soft as the previous one. This is a simple case of using the softness tool within the brush tool itself. When we come to thickness, we can make particularly thick shapes. We could also make particularly thin shapes. If we want to get really detailed, we can really scale that down and make some really fine shapes, some very, very specific stuff. Quite useful if we want to indicate a very, very, very unique effect on the floor or writing, something along those lines. Opacity simply determines how visible they are. Something to note when we're using the brush tool, if I make the thickness back to uh, its sort of usual size and I like a nice strong fall off, so I usually have my softness ramped up quite high. If I were to draw from this room and I draw all the way across, you can see that stripe all the way across my rooms. Notice what happens when I let go of the mouse button. Only the room in which I started has the brush texture applied. All of the other rooms do not have it. The reason for that is that I can apply the brush texture to each room without it spilling over into the next room if I'm not particularly careful. It won't spill over into the next room. I would need to actually draw in that room to continue that shape if I so choose to. Another thing to bear in mind with the brush tool is that I can again use my select tool, go to my actual map and select the brush. You'll notice this strange shaped line, whatever shape you drew when you were using the brush texture. So you can get some really crazy shapes. And again, I can change the texture if I wanted to. I could make it look like old dirt, for example. I could let me deselect that. I could change the thickness of the brush so that we can get some very fine lines or we can just fill up that entire space. I can change the softness so I can make it a hard edge or a soft edge and I can change the opacity so it's either barely visible or it is absolutely visible, depending on what I want to do with each of the textures. I can also select a texture, left click on it and drag it somewhere else. Now notice that if I drag it so that it's just on the edge of the wall, it's still not creeping across. And if I drag it, let's say, let's scroll down here. If I drag it all the way across into these cells, remember Dungeon Fog uses your cursor to determine where the object is within the map. So if I drag it here, this room has the texture, these rooms do not. If, however, I grab the line here in the middle, Dungeon Fog will automatically reassign the brush tool to this room or perhaps to this room, depending on where we want it to go. So that's very important to remember when you want to move your brush tool around. Wherever your cursor is, that's where the brush tool will be applied in the specific room that the cursor is over. And that is how you use the brush tool in Dungeon Fog.